What's up, everybody? We are back with another unpopular opinion with our team at Diverse City. Today we have Miss Cheryl Ingram. We got Miss Judy Blair. And I'm Tasha LeRae. And we're going to kick this thing off. So first, we're going to have Cheryl kick us off with her unpopular opinion. And then we're going to dive in. Let's get it. All right. What's up, everybody? So let me give y'all my opinion. The first unpopular presentation. Ugh. The first unpopular opinion we're going to present to you today is that everybody shouldn't do diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Now, what does that mean? Here's the thing. I'm not saying that DEI can't be part of your role and your responsibility. It should be. What I'm saying is you should not be consulting or helping your company plan strategy necessarily on diversity, equity, and inclusion work. That is not for everybody, and there's a number of reasons why. Let me give you a couple of examples. First, we find that when we go into companies, there are people who are doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work, like a diversity, equity, and inclusion manager, a director of diversity that are underfunded and under-resourced, and they don't always have the skills to create strategy from that, nor should they have to, to be fair. But what has happened is when we go into a company, we find that they just promoted the person or put the person who was the most passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion into that position. So here this person is passionate and really wanting to do the job. They love it, but they just don't have the skill set to facilitate difficult conversations, to deal with very, very difficult people, to deal with different levels of resistance from the executive all the way down to the entry level because they tend to exist at every level within a company. And what happens is these people get burnt out very quickly. They get tired very quickly and they decide to leave the role or they don't wanna do DEI work or the people in the company feel like diversity, equity, and inclusion work doesn't work because they put the person who wasn't qualified to do that work in the position. Now, some of y'all might hear me and think, oh, she's being cocky. She's a cocky consultant. No, I'm saying this with humility, right? Because it took a lot of work for me to understand what diversity, equity, and inclusion is. And it's very integral into what you do daily. Like we talk about putting DEI in our DNA. A lot of people don't know how to do that. Another topic that I'm going to add to this is that everybody can't facilitate diversity, equity, and inclusion workshops. Y'all have got to stop if you are not qualified but passionate. And here's what I mean by that, because some people will say, well, we're not qualified because of access. I get that. But to facilitate well requires a certain amount of understanding for what's needed in the room and of the content, especially if you meet resistance in the room. And one too many times I've seen people fold because they don't know what to say when someone asks them a difficult question. And I'm usually very empathetic because if you are a person from a marginalized identity and you fuck up in a training, guess what? Your credibility immediately goes out the door and you lose the people in the training, even if it's an important topic. Now, what we see are people from certain identities, like for example, a woman who's passionate about the fact that she's being discriminated against and wants to fight it in a workplace, can't always be qualified to do a training on gender equity or sexism in the workplace. It's a lot of key components to that. What you are qualified to do is share your experiences to help a company understand, but don't try to use those to help them build strategy. You know what I'm saying? And so if you are going to be that person and you wanna do DEI work, I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm saying that you should, but you need to make sure you are prepared because if you don't, what you do is mess it up one for the rest of us, or you make our jobs harder, or you make it harder for the underrepresented and marginalized populations in the workplace. That's why I'm saying everybody doesn't and can't do DEI work and shouldn't. You can be a part of the work, but you don't need to be the vision behind the work or the strategist behind the work. If you're not qualified to do that, you need to sit down. That's my thought. Floor is open. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Um, I think the biggest misconception is that, okay, if the company has an issue with discrimination, we should automatically go to the group of people that are being discriminated against and make them the point person to show us the way. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there is so much error in doing that because one, you have a person who's going through their own trauma that's associated with that discrimination that's being put against them. So they're dealing with that and now they're having to educate and help the person or group or whatever that's oppressing them and it's like no like that that's putting a person in a wrong like an unfair 
position. But then too, the problem with not being able to navigate those, in, those, those emotionally charged conversations, you pretty much can close down the window of opportunity to actually have good dialogue that actually can be very, very effective because everyone will automatically put their defenses up. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. And it's all stemmed from having the wrong people who are not qualified to facilitate facilitate those types of conversations on that level. Right. Yes, yes. Okay. Facilitation is a skill, right? And um, I said to someone the other day, it doesn't really matter what the topic is. If you're a good facilitator, you can facilitate a room full of people. Right. And if, you're, if you don't have those skills, you can really fuck it up. Yeah. Um, I'm, I was dealing with someone um, fairly recently that it's a group that needed to do a reconciliation process. They had had a thing happen and Ooh. there were, there's a lock of, loss of trust on both sides, both groups of folks. And this person who is not a trained facilitator made it worse. Mm. Oh gosh. Yeah. And like, she's passionate. She's passionate about the work mm. and she knows a lot and she's done a lot of her own work around it, but she didn't have the skills to understand when she should and shouldn't say certain things yes. and like what to like, what to move forward with and what to sort of like tease out a little bit further. Right. And um, yeah, you can do some real damage and it's really a bummer, right? Because everyone's, everyone wants this to work and everyone wants it to be like, uh, it's hard enough already, right? Yeah. Without it being made harder um, because the person put in the position of dealing with it doesn't have the skill set. So yeah, anyone who's been put in that position needs to ask for professional development right around facilitation or bring in outside facilitators having a third party in the room someone who is maybe not impartial but certainly external is yeah. hugely helpful right yeah. Um, and yeah that passion can go a long way but if you don't have the the actual skill set to back it up it's it can it can go wrong real quick mm -hmm. right and it makes all the efforts seem like they're short-lived like right. just going through this process, it's actually that, a process. You don't fix it in a week. You don't fix it in one training. It doesn't get fixed in a year. You know, this is a gradual, progressive over time. And there's no time stamp to say, okay, 10 years in and we're done. No, it's, this is a continual process. And to, to short circuit it by putting the wrong people in the wrong place at the wrong time doesn't make it any better. Right. It's like, do you remember Fresh Prince when Will had the friend who was really funny? Mm -hmm. and was a stand-up comedian. And Will was really funny. or uh, And he wanted to be a stand-up comedian. But when mm -hmm. he got on stage, he bombed. Because it's, it's good to be funny, but just because you're funny doesn't mean you have the skills to be a stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. It's just like the same with DEI. Just because you're passionate doesn't mean that you have the skill set to be a strategist. I get that diversity, equity, inclusion is everybody's job. It's a part, let me be, let me restate that. DEI is a part of everybody's job, but mm -hmm. DEI is not everybody's job. You feel me? Like, like it, it takes, it's, it's different. It should be a part of everybody's role in what they do in a company, but that doesn't mean that they are qualified to create strategy. So for example, a software engineer who's passionate about DEI, but has never done any kind of strategy work could be doing some great work when it comes to understanding how algorithms create bias because they build algorithms, right? That's part of DEI work associated with a role, but the person creating strategy for the engineering department should not be an engineer. Mm -hmm. Who a, a DEI strategy for an engineering department should not be an engineer unless that engineer has a specialization in diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know what I'm saying? So that, yeah. that's my word for, yeah. for that. Yeah. That, that's definitely that. Judy, you have any last words you want to speak on that one? I don't think so. I mean, we could talk about it forever, but we could. But I think, <laughs> we, I think we hit it. So that is it. We're going to wrap this one up. And yes, hit the like, subscribe button. Leave us a comment in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you get, disagree? Let us know. We want to hear from you and we will respond back. We ain't afraid. We'll get you.
<laughs> All right. So till next time, keep it locked. We'll be at you. Peace.